Suppose you are designing a toolbox for a truck bed similar to this one. One of the design challenges associated with this project is to select a constant force gas spring that will be able to hold the lid open. The lid weighs 16 pounds, which we determined from our CAD model. We need to size and position the gas spring such that it holds the lid open so the person can have both hands free, but it also has to allow gravity to keep it closed so that when the person unlatches it, it will stay closed until the person begins lifting it on purpose. We definitely don't want the lid popping up and hitting us in the jaw when it's unlatched. So therefore, we want to position the gas spring so that the leverages are such that there will be a transition angle, a sweet spot if you will, where any smaller angle will allow gravity to keep the lid closed, and any larger angle will allow the gas spring to overcome and keep the lid open. In order to understand intuitively what's going on as this lid opens and closes, we need to be able to visualize what's happening to the leverage distances. So here's the weight acting at the center of gravity of the lid, and this is the leverage distance to that weight, the moment arm, if you will. And notice it's being measured from the hinge. When the lid is open, notice what's happened to that leverage distance. The weight is certainly the same, but the leverage distance is much smaller. So as the lid is opening, the leverage distance is shrinking quite rapidly. Now let's look at the leverage associated with the spring. Notice that leverage distance is the perpendicular distance to the spring force as measured from the hinge. And notice what's happened as the lid opens. That leverage distance of the spring shrinks a small amount, but not very much. So the leverage caused by the weight of the lid is shrinking quite drastically as the lid opens. But the leverage of the spring is shrinking only a little bit as the lid opens. So the further you open the lid, the more effective the spring will be in keeping it open. That's why there's a sweet spot. There's an angle at which point the spring can overcome because the leverage distance for the weight of the lid is small enough that the spring now has enough leverage to overcome. Here's a side view showing the toolbox lid in both the closed and open positions. This is the gas spring which we will need to size and position correctly. Notice that we will be mounting the gas spring rod down. This is very important since there is some oil inside the spring that not only slows and dampens the motion, but also lubricates the rod seal. So mounting it rod down will result in a longer life for the spring. Gas springs have ball sockets on each end, and we can purchase brackets with ball studs that will fit in the sockets. Dimensions D, E, and F in this figure depend on which brackets we will be purchasing. I have listed values for these dimensions here in the figure because we have already picked out the brackets that we will be purchasing. Here's the McMaster website showing that these brackets are readily available. We will be purchasing this type of bracket on the bottom end and this type of bracket for the top end. The real challenge for us will be to determine the correct size gas spring and how to position it correctly. Here's a page from the online McMaster catalog showing a list of possible gas springs we could use. Notice how this site lists both the extended and compressed lengths for each option. It also lists all the possible extension forces available for each size. If you recall, the extension force of a gas spring is relatively constant as the spring is compressed. That's why we call them constant force gas springs. And that force depends on the nitrogen precharge pressure inside the spring. So purchasing a higher spring force simply means that it has a higher nitrogen precharge pressure inside it. This is the spring I will be using for the example in this video. Notice that the one I'm choosing for this video example has an extended length of 13.19 inches and a compressed length of 8.27 inches, or in other words, it has a 4.92 inch stroke. This size gas spring can be purchased with extension forces ranging from 15 to 120 pounds. Let's choose the 60 pound extension force for the example in this video. When the toolbox lid is completely closed, the gas spring must not yet be fully compressed. That way we are assured that the lid can close fully. The extended length of the gas spring defines how far the lid can open. We want to make sure that the lid could open wide enough to conveniently access everything inside the toolbox, which means it needs to open at least 55 degrees, but no more than 65 degrees. This is a zoomed in view of the toolbox lid. We will have to do a force analysis in order to determine a value for dimension A, which will allow the spring to work correctly. We will be setting up a spreadsheet which will allow us to try different values for dimension A and adjust the lid angle from zero to the maximum and determine the resultant forces to see if they will be sufficient. There are only two forces we need to worry about, the weight of the lid, which we will assume is acting at the center of mass, and the force of the gas spring, which acts in this direction. The force calculations are pretty straightforward since we just have to balance moments about the hinge. However, analyzing the geometry and calculating the important leverage distance will be a little tricky. Trigonometry allows us to calculate angles and distances associated with right triangles. So let's break this up into six different triangles. Triangle number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. Let's look at each triangle in more detail. 
Here's triangle number one. It's a right triangle. The adjacent side is right here, which is dimension B, the distance to the center of mass of the lid, which we determined from the CAD model. The opposite side is right here, which is dimension C, which was also determined from the CAD model. This is the hypotenuse of triangle one, which we can calculate using the Pythagorean theorem. And here's the angle of triangle one, which we can calculate using the inverse tangent function. Here's triangle number two, and you can see that the hypotenuse of triangle number two is the same as number one, which is why we needed to analyze triangle number one first. The angle for triangle number two can be determined by adding the lid angle to the angle for triangle number one. The adjacent side can be determined using the cosine function, and the opposite side can be determined using the sine function. Here's triangle number three. The adjacent side of this triangle is dimension A, which is what we we're trying to determine in this force analysis. The opposite side is dimension D, which comes from the bracket we will be purchasing from McMaster. The hypotenuse can be determined with the Pythagorean theorem, and the angle can be determined with the inverse tangent function. Here's triangle number four. The hypotenuse is equal to that of triangle number three. The angle can be defined by taking the lid angle and subtracting the angle from triangle number three. The adjacent side can be determined from the cosine function, and the opposite side can be determined by the sine function. Here's triangle number five. The adjacent side is dimension E. The opposite side is dimension F. The hypotenuse can be determined using Pythagorean theorem, and the angle can be determined from the inverse tangent function. Here's triangle number six. The adjacent side can be determined by taking the adjacent side from triangle four and subtracting the opposite side from triangle five. The opposite side of triangle number six can be determined by adding the adjacent side from triangle five to the opposite side of triangle four. The angle can be determined using the inverse tangent function. The hypotenuse can be determined using the Pythagorean theorem. And this hypotenuse is the length of the spring at that particular position. Now that we have all the necessary lengths, we can complete the force analysis. The key to analyzing forces is to realize that all moments about the hinge have to balance. Or in academic terms, the sum of the moments about the hinge must equal zero. So let's build out that equation. Here's the weight acting vertically downward, and we find that the leverage distance for calculating its moment is the adjacent side of triangle two, and that results in a positive moment since it's counterclockwise. Here's the force of the spring, which acts along the axis of the spring since it's a two-force member. We have to break it into its components to make it easier to calculate its moment. The horizontal component is acting at this leverage distance, which is the opposite side of triangle four, and that results in a positive moment since it's counterclockwise. The vertical component is acting at this distance, which is the adjacent side of triangle four, and that results in a negative moment since it is clockwise. So here we are combining the two positive moments and the one negative moment, which have to balance to zero. If we do some algebra and solve for the unknown force, this is what we get, which we can use in the spreadsheet that we are making to facilitate our analysis. Here I am in Excel, and you can see that I've created my spreadsheet that will allow me to do this force study. Notice here on the left side under toolbox dimensions that I've highlighted in yellow the lid angle so I can change the lid angle and see how the forces and the spring lengths are changing. I've also highlighted dimension A which is something that I need to do as a designer, figure out where A needs to be located so that the spring will work correctly. Dimensions B, C, D, E, and F are, are just all measurements I took from the CAD model as I was designing this lid. Under this section here, gas spring specifications, this is where I can just pick the spring that I want to use so that I have its specifications right here in front of me to compare to. And if you remember, I chose the 60 pound force spring that had a retracted length of 8.27 inches and an extension length of 13.19 inches. Over here under the results, this is where I'm calculating the actual force needed to hold the lid open at that particular lid angle and the length of the spring at that particular position as well. You can see that through this side, I'm doing the intermediate calculations for each of the triangles because those were critical for finding the leverage distances for the forces. So I can come in and I can change the lid angle down to zero degrees and see how much force it requires. And at zero degrees, the required force here in this cell had better be bigger than the force of the spring because gravity needs to hold it down. But if I go up in angles, eventually this force should be about equal to 60 degrees, and that'll tell me the angle that's that transition angle, that sweet spot, where any angle above that, the spring will take over and automatically open the lid. One way to find out exactly what that sweet spot is is just to click on the force and come up to the data panel and do a what-if analysis, do a goal-seek. 
in this goal seek window, I can set this cell right here, E12, which is the force calculation, to a particular value. In this case, let's set it to the 60 pounds. And I can try and get that by iterating cell B3, which is the lid angle. And when I hit OK, it just iterates until it finds what exact lid angle will give me the force equal to this gas spring. And that will be the transition angle. Now you'll have to play with this dimension A to get it so that the transition angle is probably between 10 and 15 degrees is a good number for the transition angle. We, are, we can also do a goal seek to figure out how wide this can open. So let's click here on the length and do another goal seek and say we want to set that length value to the extension length of the, th of the spring. In this case it's a 13.19 and I want to change the lid angle on that one and it'll iterate to now tell me what lid angle will make the actual length of the spring equal to the maximum length of the spring and that's how far this lid will open. It'll never open more than that. And I can see the force here and I'm going to look at the force and say is the required force to hold it in that position had better be less than the force available in the spring because I want to make sure my spring has enough force to hold it open. So if I've got 60 pounds worth of force, then this required force at the open position had better be much less than that so that spring is holding it up there in an open position. So you'll be using this spreadsheet to do the design work. You'll be changing this dimension A so that you can get everything to work out. So at first you may want to choose this spring that I've chosen and see if you can get it to work out and find out what this distance should be so that this lid can open to a maximum of between 55 and 65 degrees and have the sweet spot angle roughly between 10 and 15 degrees. And then once you've done it with this spring that I've chosen, I recommend choosing a different spring and seeing if you can figure out dimension A that will get a different spring to work so that you are not just copying what I'm doing, but actually doing the design work yourself. This is a very practical problem that you could encounter in real life. And this is why spreadsheets are so powerful.